Well, hey guys, welcome to Phantom Live, our bi weekly podcast where me, TJ, and Matt here talk hey, about doing? fishing, tackle shop life, and anything in between. We also answer any of your questions, tips, and tricks, anything that you can imagine in a fishing slash outdoor podcast. We're going to do it right here on Phantom Live every other week, right here on our Facebook channel, facebook.com slash Phantom Outdoors. We do these live, so we interact with the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Uh, we also want to remind you that you can follow us across all social media platforms here on Facebook if you're watching live. We're also on Instagram, we're on TikTok, and we're on YouTube. And so we'll actually post the replay of the podcast over on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, we also have big plans for the YouTube channel moving forward. We want to do some more in-depth how-to videos, interviews, and tell more stories about life running an, an outdoor shop and things like that. So make sure you're subscribed over on YouTube as well. Uh, and with that being said, uh, we hope you guys all had a very good 4th of July. What'd you do? I relaxed. I didn't do anything. You just enjoyed your day off? Left a boat in the garage. Every, everything was... We just didn't do anything. Didn't feel like... You know, sometimes boat landings could be a little, a little crowded, so figured i'd let them have it this weekend yeah just caught up on some stuff so cool around the house did some pressure washing and hung out with my wife and kids and had a good had a good weekend nice cooked some crawfish yesterday so mm. i had a crawfish boil do you uh do you break them do you suck the head i do not i don't i can't do it nope i, I just can't eat, do it just eat the tail meat hey, that's it any real cajuns out there feel free to call us out but i'm not i'm not big on sucking the head either um yeah we went out just cruising on my in in-laws pontoon boat out around short stay which is a, a military facility here facility that's that makes it sound like a base but it's like a yeah. military retreat center and uh hung out in the water kind of took it easy and then actually yesterday for the fourth of july i was just laid on the couch all day yeah try to recover Sometimes we work hard here like we work hard here man we need we, we, we had a long weekend so we did yeah um so yeah, let's talk. Uh, we're, we'll talk a little bit about fishing here in the Low Country lately and how things have been going, um, and then we'll get right into tackle shop life. Where we want to, we got so many cool things we want to talk to you guys about uh, tonight. Stuff that we either use or new stuff, new stuff that we're getting in, right. all of that. Um, first, I'm gonna check on one setting real quick while you uh, talk about how's fishing been for you lately. Well, I haven't been, so. Uh, I kind of took the weekend off. I hear that uh, you won your last club tournament, so good, good for I you. I did, big guy. Um, like to like to hear about that a little bit. I know it, you had a big weight, which was <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I picked you up and I brought you down. That's all good. <laughs> but a win's a win, buddy. That's all. That's all that matters. You got it done. You fish against some tough guys, so. To get that done, that was good. If you want to talk about it, let's talk about what, <laughs> how you caught them in the lake. So uh, I fished with. I was making sure our uh, chat was working. Uh, if somebody, if somebody in chat could just type a message so I can make sure that it's working, that would help me out uh, tremendously. So uh, I fished with Dixieland Bassmasters here in the Low Country, and uh, we had a tournament out on the lake. I still fish as a co angler because I don't have my own bass boat yet, and. Um, last chris what's up man thank you so much for typing in the chat i don't know why it's duplicating everything and showing it twice but uh we're just gonna have to live with it tonight um but thank you and uh we get out there and 10 minutes in y'all we talked about the big gabbit last week 10 minutes throwing the mega bass big gabbit i caught a two and a half pounder we didn't have another bite all day i had one bite for the rest of the day uh it broke me off it was on a cinco i'll just Pretend that was, you know, a nine, ten pounder. Did you pull that out of your pocket? Do you can't <laughs> walk around with big gabbits in your pocket? Yeah, in case anybody wants me to sign That's it for them. Dangerous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bro, that one fish won the whole tournament, dude. That goes sometimes. Dude. The lake is tough. Dude, the lake is brutal right now. I mean, they had a little scratch the other night. I think 16 pounds won at Chris Wren and them. Um, they, yeah, I'd say it's, it's fishing pretty tough. Um, it's just summertime. So what do, what do we do? Great. Like, tell me, like... Pretend I'm a new. Uh, pretend you're talking to someone who's like just getting into fishing. They want to hit the lake with their family and catch a bass. What do they need to be doing right now to try to catch a fish? Sell them tube crickets. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> it, it it's hard to tell in this in the summertime because I mean 
a tournament can be won in a foot of water right now is just as well as it could be won in 20 foot of water. Right. So in or anywhere between. I mean, they could. There's going to be some fish just up eating eating brim and stuff really shallow. There's going to be fish in brush piles and uh, natural ledges, uh, creek channels, stuff like that. Um, it, it's it could go anyway. I yeah. mean, so right now, it, it's an important time in the, you know, the heat of the summer like this, I'd say put a confidence bait in your hand and just go to town. You yeah. know, not necessarily running through 100 baits. Um, you know, frog works really good if you like shallow water fishing and then a, a Carolina rig or, a, you know, a Texas rig old monster or a Z-curl worm or something like that work, works great. I know people catch them on drop shots and swim baits and, uh, you know, you can spook them right now. And but you're not a drop shotter. I will. Okay. I'll do whatever it takes. I felt like some, someone told me one time that, Matt, you don't like to fish slow like that. I'm, I'd prefer not. I don't, right. I don't think there's any fisherman that you talk to that's like, I'm so excited I get to go throw a drop <laughs> shot for no. 12 hours. I mean, none of us really like doing that. I I, I don't think so anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather catch them on a frog all day. I, you know, 100%. Or a, a spinnerbait or a buzzbait or flipping or something like that. Something fun. Um, but... Realistically, drop shots. I mean, it wins tournaments. Wacky yeah. worms win tournaments. You know, yeah. it's it's hard to go out and just throw a frog all day. And, I mean, you're probably gonna catch a couple good bites, but you possibly only have one or two bites. Right. So. so the two and a half pounder was the only fish I weighed in. There were three other fish weighed in, all under two. So I won the big fish money and I won the points. We're a points club, and uh, when I'm pulling him in, uh, Brad Schindeldecker, a uh, hammer in these parts. He nets the fish for me, and he says, you might have just won. And at, you know, 7 in the morning, I'm like, no, there's no way. Like, somebody on the lake is on them. And just, I guess, fortunately for me, nobody else was. But yeah. it was in about two feet of water on that frog. So, and I love frog fishing. That's sure. That's my favorite. It's just fun. I mean, it's, you know, it kind of brings us back to, to where we're beginning. And you know, everybody loves top water bite. Jonathan says, find the right grass or fish offshore brush piles. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, and it could be one and either. The yeah. right grass or offshore brush. So, so I say it could be, you know, anywhere from foot deep. And I mean, Black's Fish Camp is hard to hard to beat it. Yeah. It, it's got everything right there. It's got a little ditch running into it. It's got some brush. got, you know, plenty of vegetation. It's a cool place. I mean. I'm debating, like, fishing a tournament with my club out of my little John boat if we put in at Black's. Because... It blow your mind how many tournaments get won in black yeah. year round. I mean, summer, spring, winter, <laughs> whichever. There's always fish to stay there. Yeah. Unless the lake draw down really low. Right. Right now, there's fish in there all the time. Hmm. Cool, cool. Well, uh, that's pretty much it for the fishing report. I uh, hope you guys are having a lot better luck out there than we've been having lately. Um, I even went out on the river with my friend Rob uh, last Sunday, and. I think I caught a you know four or five inch fish, and he caught one maybe ten inch fish. Like it's just been tough for us. So I mean, if you guys have any uh, any spots or tips that you want to leave in the chat for for the new guys, that'd be great. Um, well, Todd and Sid won last Thursday. They had yeah, they had a little over seventeen pounds, so that was good. That's been they had a couple. I think a one over five, a couple over four or something. So they had a good, real good bag. Um, the rivers been tough as far as the weight so that was good for them yeah it was good to hear because you know we had heard that the river was one with seven pounds then 10 pounds and then for them to come in with 17 that's a big jump yep, so good was. for them yeah we're obviously big todd fans that's my boy let's go <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> but uh yeah man so let's talk tackle shop life what's new around the shop what have what's been going on what have you been any um, cool stories or well products? i mean not so much on the stories we got you know right now we're kind of we're stocked for the summer, uh, pretty much. So now we're we're starting to look ahead and and stock for you know winter time cranking. This is time to buy your jigs and your chunks and make sure that we got everything going into you know October, November, all that kind of stuff. So um, making sure we got plenty of stuff. We're going to go to a show in Phoenix, I think somewhere in Arizona. Um, first day of deer season actually we'll, no. be there, we'll be there august 14th 15th and 16th so i'll kill all the um, deer to, before y'all get back go ahead <laughs> but so we'll be there buying all the stuff for for next year basically um looking at all the new products we're not going to icast this year which mm. is um icast was really cool uh really really good to see see all the new products it, in my personal opinion on icast it was kind of a letdown because it's like 
they you know they dangle this carrot in front of you but you just can't have it right you know, it, they show you everything that's coming out but but this year with manufacturing and shipping delays and all i mean we're just starting to get stuff that i saw in icast last year in july so yeah. a year later so it's kind of it's it's tough you know we've we've planned ahead and pretty stock zoom has made a phenomenal comeback putting out lots of plastics again um, and we love zoom yeah, I mean, everybody loves them. Um, all the scupper dogs are back in stock, I think, in about every style. Even we've even got styles that we didn't have, you know, baby brush hogs and scupper nog. Um, still, if you want that scupper nog green, you got to go to Southland. We have them in trick worms, flipping crawls, um, ten and a half inch, like the old style, old monster worm. Um, so, still kind of get to do that with the, if you want the scupper nog green. But we do have the regular scupper nog and i think every line of zoom except maybe the speed worm one that's been out for a while tilapia magic we, did, seen we are stopping back stocking back up on tilapia magic which is which is nice it's a good color around here um so green, green pumpkin shade for those of you guys that don't know southland tackle co is actually our brand uh here at phantom and uh our boy todd was in here pack repackaging those scupper non green this weekend so yep. we've got a ton of it uh, it's a, obviously a great sought after color, so you can shop that on our website if you're if you're not local to us at phantomoutdoors.com. But you can also come in the shop, um, and if we don't have any on the shelves, we can definitely definitely try to get it for you out of the back or, or whatever you need. But um, that's really cool to see. So, question about trade shows like ICAST. Do you mm-hmm. ever see Phantom reattending or having our own booth or something like yeah. at a show like that? Absolutely. Um, I Absolutely. know we'll be at the fair. Yeah, but I on a, a trade show, yes. I mean, yeah. in long long term, yes. Yeah. I would I could see Phantom at ICAST cool. selling Phantom, not yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I could see that. And I'm sure everybody has everybody here has that same same mentality and goal. You right. Know what I mean, we're here to grow. So yeah. So I mean, we 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 don't we'll never like uh, put all our cards out on the table. But I mean, we we do have like really great plans and, and a, uh, the, the, be- the better word there is we have a big vision for where we want the brand sure. Phantom to go and like we've got stuff coming out as early as like three weeks from now that I'm super excited about um, we got some new performance shirts dropping for our summer series coming out that uh, I got to hand pick like the colors and the, the logos and stuff that I'll I'm actually on Instagram and Facebook tomorrow I'm gonna uh, drop a uh, like a coming soon like a teaser I'm really excited about those shirts to drop, but but we have we have big visions and dreams for Phantom that are way bigger than just a cool shirt drop here and there. Sure. Um, so absolutely, yeah, dude. I don't know how we got here, but y'all stay tuned. Um, <laughs> Jonathan said that uh, the jig bite was working for him last week, but uh, the Trocar bladed swim bait hook with any creature four to five inch swim bait trailer across the top of a water shield, water shield type of grass or spatter dock pads. Crush them anywhere on the East Coast right now. Just kill the motion anytime you hit holes. See, that's cool because I've never even would have thought of throwing a creature bait on that. You no, know? me either. In my mind, that's for a swim bait or a very good. I mean, that just shows you there's so many ways to catch fish. And we, uh, I mean, what I love about that, uh, about Jonathan dropping that knowledge in here is like, uh, you watch YouTube videos of the fishing community and, and they paint these bass anglers to be out like, I'm not telling you anything. I'm not telling you where to, like, nah, I never would have like that. No, it's not like that. Not um, at least not in our community. Our yeah, community has been I'd very... Say, I mean, they're, they're secrets, but sure. for the most part, anybody uh, sure. anybody help you. I mean, I won't tell you exactly where I caught that frog, mainly because I I couldn't point it to you on a map as a co-angler, but... Uh, <laughs> and Brad's, Brad would probably be, <laughs> he would probably be waiting on you outside. Brad kick this door in. Yeah, kick the door in. So. <laughs> we love you, Brad. You want to go to some new stuff? Yeah, let's talk about some new products, man. All right. What you got? First one. This was actually an ICAST drop last year. Um, Berkeley Agent E. It's you know Mega Bass has had the um, the dark sleeper style bait. You can't hold. It. I was gonna you show can, you, know, you just up. Everybody see it? <laughs> this one's kind of cool. What here? You want to hold it up? I was just gonna get close light. Oh, close up. All right. So that's the Agent E. We that's need a, a, a crawfish. This is a crawfish color, brown craw. Um, cool color for Cooper River, without a doubt. It's a, a swim bait. Basically, you can fish it on the bottom. You can swim it. You can do what you want. The cool thing is, if you watch any of the videos, it's weedless. Um, so you can fish it like a jig. Basically, pump it off the bottom. And the, 
you know, when it's really slow in the winter, real cold, you can crawl it on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I could see some, you know, we've caught some good ones on the Megavat, on the Dark Sleeper. Um, they just kind of took their little spin on it. And different weed guard, a little more weedless. Pretty cool bait. Uh, uh, John, Johnson said he fished the Dark Sleeper with good success. He's dying to try the Agent E. Yeah. Um, we have one pack of the yeah. of the brown. We had we had some. Um, yeah. Certain customer come in and bought every one of them as we were unpacking them. <laughs> Rob, thanks. Rob. Um, so yeah, we got a we got a half a half open pack now. Uh, we got, we got some more coming in. So. Yeah. Um, one that I really really like is the Waterwood crankbaits. Yeah. If anybody knows, you know, if you're into custom painted, custom made uh, baits. You know, this is kind of like the cream of the crop. It, right. it gets no better than this. His quality, every every one is just flawless. The they they come kind of have a matte finish to them, which is really awesome. I mean, nothing you know really shines. So just a just a cool bait. Um, we have every line of these, but his new top water. So all depth ranges from two foot square square bills down to six or seven foot. Um, just stop in take a look at these they are they're i mean they're a work of art even if you didn't fish just like a talk piece i mean they come in this wood box pack with the little packing just a, a beautiful beautiful bait um definitely something to check out all right before you before you move on from the water wood okay the first thing someone's gonna say is that's a 40 dollar crankbait mm -hmm. and like like matt pointed out last week I mean that in and of itself is an advantage because not everybody's throwing a forty dollar without a doubt. And so the fish and if you throw the if you throw the bait, you'll know immediately why what it is. If you if any I mean we've got some people out there to paint, um, we've got some people out there to build baits. Yeah, there isn't a bait builder around that says that forty dollars is too much to ask because sure. I mean it. You I mean there's a lot of time going into that bait, tuning, yeah. building them, making sure, and then the scrap that they throw away, the ones that don't make the cut. You know, it's it's a bunch to it. There's a big difference in a, a hand painted sure. lure or a hand painted piece of art versus a machine painted piece of art. That's and right. So. And these are hand, hand painted. painted. Yeah, handmade cool. everything. All right, I'm um, excited about this. Let's talk about this net bait. STH set the hook series. Um, their new line of plastics got the bait fuel right in them, so they'll be coming out soon. Got drop shot worms, burner worms, just a bunch of different um, frogs, creature baits, all kind of stuff. And it's they actually have some series with like the pocket crawl and all that that'll have the bait fuel already in it. So that's going to be kind of a a big deal. That the guys who are buying the bait fuel are loving it they're asking for more so it's definitely we had talked about it is it yeah. the real deal is it not the real deal it's obviously the real deal uh, uh we're we're continue to sell it great yeah. um obviously it's sold out everywhere in the world so yeah pretty much we uh so between la like last time or two weeks ago we talked about bait fuel how we were trying so hard to get it we couldn't get it we ended up getting a shipment it was gone the next day like we sold out of it and um so i think by I mean this is this is two things. Number one is genius marketing because now it's like oh you can't find a bottle of you know bay fuel now you can try to find our own line of soft plastics that already have it infused, um, and it, it makes it simpler because I already had a bottle of bay fuel, drizzled it in my packs that I'm fishing with tonight like rub them up and um, this you don't have to worry about it it's already there it's already packaged and so if bait fuel is legit which everyone is saying it is it's, it is it is i mean at this point 100%. You know, we can't argue against it can't argue it um and now it's already done for you and i love it you know it's drop shot baits i like to drop shot obviously i don't love it but drop shot baits speed worms the little soft toads um <coughs> they sent us a sample pack um so you know we'll, we'll let you know how they fish pretty yeah, soon these are samples yeah. these are samples we don't have these yet hopefully we'll get some for sale soon going into drop shot baits Let's probably go. the hardest worm to get anywhere in the last year flatworm mm -hmm. max scent flatworm this is the goby especially if you are i mean it looks good it's like a green pumpkin purple and gold um that's goby looks great for any of our northern anglers we got them in the 4.25 and the 3.8 so get them i think we got we probably got a couple hundred packs of them, so they, I don't expect them to last long. Yeah. Um, anybody up north, they also work in Cooper River. 
So they eat them. They eat them in the Cooper River good okay. too. So it's really good colors. Um, Rebel Popar. We all started on this. Everybody. This bait. This is a. They had the P70, which is the old, bigger Popar that everybody wanted. It was desirable. Stetson Blaylock won some money on it, and then everybody had to have them again. Well, they just is the new P71 big bait. Um, cool thing about it, they got nice colors on them now. It's not just a regular old chrome and black, which works in the mm -hmm. bone. But they have some nice colors. Um, definitely, uh, I'd say top water for a little bit bigger bite. So, what's your philosophy on on top water baits? Because kids. Not not just kids, adults too come in and say, uh, "What color frog should I get?" And I I'm I'm pretty a gen generic. Like I got this one uh, from Mega Bass. It's the uh, Kairu Shad. It's got a little shad. bit of purple, but right. I mean it's it's basically white. I always say white or black well, because of contrast. Clear. I would say that's a clear bait. So fish only see the belly of a topwater bait, right? Like mm -hmm. so, really, are you of the the uh, the camp that says like you know the paint jobs are really to catch the? Uh, no, I think the. I think the paint job helps. I mean, there's certain times when I think a yellow belly frog works better than anything else. Okay. There, black works a lot. Yeah. White works a lot. I know? use a lot of white. Um, green, my, one of my favorites is green pumpkin, and it's got an orange mouth. And I think it's because it's basically a black frog with an orange mouth, and I think it looks brimmy, I guess. Um, but it, it works good. So, yeah, I think color, color does matter. I mean, when it comes to that, you know, yeah. whether... You know, and it might be just as simple as getting one extra bite a day, and that does matter. That, yeah. You know, like, you know, if, had Brad been throwing a different color frog than you, he may have caught a four pounder and, right. whoop, and whooped you. He might. You know? So, I mean, that that's a, it, it does, you know, just set yourself apart from everybody else. Um, this paint job does look really good. It's like it a blue and white, and there's some sparklies in there. It's a good looking. This one that we have in here is uh, the Harvest Moon color, if you want to look it up, but yeah. it's a good looking it's good. popper. Um, Going to reels, lose Pro SP. That's the skipping and pitching reel. We have, I mean, we've been trying. We've had these on order for the longest time. Um, finally got some in. We don't have many. I think 10. Um, feels pretty cool. Holds about 40 yards of line. Mm -hmm. um, it is made specifically for flipping and pitching. So, so I asked you when we, we were demoing skipping. this a little bit, I was asking you what's the benefit of having that shallower spool? So the biggest thing is, is when you're skipping, regardless of what level you are on you're going to backlash okay when you backlash on this you're not losing a hundred you know a thirty dollar spool of fluorocarbon you're right. you're getting you know you're you're really only using 30 yards of line anyway right so it's plenty of line for what you need to do and a 40 yard cast is a long cast yeah. i mean a 40 yards is, is pretty long so you know we we get into well, I want 100 yards on there, but well, we can all throw 50, you know, or right. 60, maybe 70 on a rattle trap or something, Ooh. but not, not too much. Um, another one, Tatula SV70. This is the new Tatula. Very compact, just a kind of a finessier reel. Um, I own one of these, and I I love it. Yeah. It, it's, it's just very good at throwing, like, um, I've been throwing a weightless Senko, throwing a fluke, throwing a float worm on it. it is, it's a it's really good. Yeah, it's it's without a doubt. It's it's super smooth. It casts well. It's light, about six ounces. So, um, just just good stuff. So that's Shimano's answer, or that's Daiwa's answer to the Shimano's like BFS. That's series. that's right. That does not have a BFS spool in it, but they sell them aftermarket. BFS is expensive. Okay. Um, BFS, you got to watch it. You know, the spools are, are paper thin. Um, I mean, that is straight up finesse and like eight pound line. If you right. put braid on it, you'll you'll crush the spool. Okay. Um, so it's definitely made for like throwing a, you know, very light, light line, shed wrap, stuff like that. Um, new raw we got in. We got a bunch of loose stuff in, but this is actually the 5XD rod. It's made specifically for the 5XD. It is it's a good feeling rod. Ordered them for somebody. Um, had to stock some more. Everybody's kind of is it. It would. I'm sure it's great for a five XD. <laughs> Could throw a square bill on it. Throw a chatterbait on it. Yeah. It's, it's a good. I mean, it is a really good feeling rod. It seven foot six. Um, medium medium power medium fast action. Just a good feeling rod. Good all around. Any kind of treble hook bait. Um, we got. The new series of Shimano Curata rods. These are sweet. 
immediately, I mean, the rod, you, the first thing you stand out, it's a super cool looking rod. It looks great. It feels great. It, yeah. it's, it's light as a feather. Um, <laughs> it's kind of picked up like what you'd see on the, the more expensive Shimano's. Um, just a good feeling rod. You got the CI4 grip and all. Definitely something worth looking. The the okay. black with the lime green is obviously a color that is kind of polarizing in the fishing industry, but I mean, it, it just it looks good. I mean, it, it's a good looking rod. It feels good too. I haven't played with that one as much, but the next I'm, thing, I'm about this. and this is kind of new, not necessarily new because they've been around for a while. Right. But everybody's been asking, you know, over and over about these uh, DC reels, mm-hmm. SLX DCs, Curata DCs, all that. Um, I was maybe a little bit of a in my, in my own heart, maybe a little bit of a hater on it. Okay. I'm like, oh, what you got to have a computer for? You know right. what I mean? It right. Never said that to a customer, but in my heart, I kind of felt it. Um, one, we weren't able to get them, right. so we did get them. First thing I did, we got some SLXs and some Curatas in. Um, so I wanted to try it with what I think is the hardest bait. I think, uh, as Todd would say, a number five shad wrap's like throwing a potato chip in the wind. It's, yeah. it's tough to throw on bait casting gear. Um, a lot of us do it. I have a special setup that I mean, I jack reeled it up, probably have four hundred dollars and with barons and everything else, Jeez. and it throws it good. This is a under two hundred dollar reel. Mm-hmm. I set it on number two, put it on a Phoenix feather, six foot nine, medium heavy, which not ideal for a shad wrap. We had some twelve pound uh, mono around, again not ideal for a shad wrap. So. I already stacked two things against this reel. Right. Waited till the wind blew. We probably had a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. I got out there and cast into it. Set on number two, I could cast 31 yards. We measured it out. 31 yards doesn't sound like that far, but that's actually a pretty long cast. And that was set on number two without thumbing the spool in the wind. Yeah. So I would say whatever disbelief I had in it, I don't have it anymore. It, it it is good at that i would love to see it on a six foot six medium or a medium light with eight pound yeah. line it's Sheesh. scary you'd probably throw Sling it, it 40 45 yards throw a shad wrap so, right uh, that's that's really good um then i mean you can control your cranking a little bit better versus cranking with a spinning reel and i know everybody does yeah. and you know you can crank with a spinning reel and it's fine but if you don't like it, this is a way to get out of it. That's the SLX DC. We have yeah. these here now. Um, pretty cool product, man. And the the uh, Phoenix Feather rods are incredibly light. And Crazy. we put the Vanguard on one, or the Vanford, sorry, on one last week. Right. A whole spinning setup that weighed, like, what, three quarter, three it, fourths of a pound? It was, like, I, I don't, I love 10.9 ounces or something like that. That's a, yeah. That was a six foot nine rod. And a 3,000 series reel. Old Skeeter, he can tell you what it weighs. He's sitting in his boat. So, you saw it? Skeeter yeah. bought it? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So, um, but it, it was phenomenal. These And these rods are holding up well. I mean, you know, you first pickup, you're like, man, that thing's so light. Is it going to be tough? Yeah, it is. Cool. We haven't warrantied one yet. I mean, they're tough. I'm debating I, getting some of the things, I don't, so they're cool. I don't finesse fish a whole lot, and I've been rinsing on them pretty good. Yeah, so, good. It's uh, it's pretty good rod. Um. Well, I'll cover a couple things that aren't fishing related, uh, and then we'll come back to it. Is one thing that I, that we're all excited about that kind of caught us all off guard is we had a customer come in and ask us about the extra tough flip flops. I mean, everybody, including myself, right now, has the extra tough boots. I mean, these these things are awesome. Put thing back on. Well, sorry about that. These things are awesome. Like everybody's wearing them. They're comfortable. Sometimes, if it's raining outside, I will wear them all day long. Uh, but someone came in and asked if we were going to get in the flip-flops. So we actually ordered some, and uh, we all fell in love with these flip-flops. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've I've worn expensive flip-flops in the past. I do think you you get what you pay for. Um, and flip-flops, if you're going to wear them all day, they got to be comfortable. you got to be able to wear them all day. Uh, and a problem with some of the other high-end brand of flip-flops is they would always rub blisters on my, on my like, where the toe strap rubs me. These never did that. Um, these extra tough flip-flops are the real deal. Uh, they're comfortable. I wore them the tournament that I fished. I wore them all day. I wore them all day fishing with Rob on his boat. They're insanely comfortable, easy to get on and off. Obviously waterproof. That's part of the whole deal with extra tough. And the cool thing is just like how we didn't know about these. A customer recommended it. We got them, 
And now I have a pair. You have a pair. Oh, yeah, Joey absolutely. has a pair. Like they're they're by far the best. I've wore Olakai's for years now, and they were, I would say they were the best, the most comfortable. I won't ever go back. And they're a good bit less expensive too. Yeah. Um, but the grip on them is unreal. They don't stretch out like most most leather flip flops do. Right. Pretty pretty awesome product. So definitely check out the extra tough men's flip flops if you guys are looking for some new uh, like footwear. Some guys don't like to wear you know shoes on the boat, but getting on the boat, getting off the boat, walking down the bank, you need something on your feet. Don't want to step on a rock. You don't want to get tetanus. You don't want that on your on your conscience. Uh, and the other thing that I brought to talk about tonight was uh, actually our Fourth of July launch that we just had last week. But we still have a lot of these items, and I mean they're cool year round because we believe in you know patriotism 365 so uh, we got our american flag hats back in stock as well you'll notice that the p is a little bit smaller um but good looking hat my father-in-law picked one up wore it all day super cool look. and then we have our fish freedom line of our ls1 performance shirts that has the flag on the back with the fish jumping out super cool design that our designer josh came up with um, and we have this in the ls1 performance shirt and we also have it in a red t-shirt or a blue t-shirt they both look amazing uh, but you can get those here in our shop or those are all online at phantomoutdoors.com as well any questions any questions uh so uh, jonathan said about he's dying to try the agent e uh jack says what's up what's up jack good to see you um it oh uh, jonathan back to the the weighted hook he said it worked on a zoom z crawl even on the big bite baits bfe I grabbed one since I was in the kayak and tried it and crushed it. Huh. Makes good sense. Makes sense. Todd Smith said, hey, 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 good stuff. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have any questions in the chat or anything that you want us to talk about or answer, definitely uh, put those in. We, wanna, we want this to be conversational. We don't want it just to be us talking sure. to each other and talking to you or at you, um, but we want to talk to you guys. So if you guys have any questions about, you know, the outdoors, fishing, hunting, uh, tackle shop life I, you know i find this stuff very interesting the stuff that we have going on uh behind the scenes sometimes i think is really interesting uh so if there's anything you guys want to know definitely let us know you got the where's that minn kota rope at oh it's right here do a little tip here all right welcome to tip time tip time <laughs> tip time then we'll go on to hunting all right this is a minn kota rope and handle okay replaces the rope on your trolling motor tell you why i'm bringing this up so everybody should keep one of these in your boat you know you're going to break a you're going to break a cable they break all the time um keep keep an extra one this is not the only reason i keep this in there just a, a little tip we found years back and i've used one in my boat probably five or six times and helping other people out without a doubt this is the best way to pull a hook out of somebody you don't have to worry about the braided fishing line cutting your hand or breaking this won't break you got a handle on it just wrap it around wrap it through the hook go back to the handle pull it out it's just a great great product to have in your boat and then also it could possibly what's wrong you're all down like you get a hook no but like it scares me like to think about that <laughs> like what? like like say we're out fishing on a thursday night or i don't know sometime this year and i get a hook in my hand i'm just gonna let you <laughs> rip it out with the <laughs> well of course we're not going home <laughs> I, mean, not, Bro. I wouldn't you no 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 we're gonna pull it up out but i'm like throwing up and passing out oh come on fish it on baby bad. it's just a fish hook Derek says good advice have you ever had to do that what rip a hook out oh yeah everybody who fishes enough will oh. it's gonna happen i mean a fish is gonna jump you're gonna get one in your hand you're gonna do the old pull it straight to you and the crankbait's gonna go in your leg it happens you fish okay. it's i mean that's inevitable if it hasn't happened it just it will. Okay. I mean, so you better always be prepared for that, to pull it out. How much is this? Let me go ahead and They're buy like one because it's going to I happen. mean, it's cheap. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a, it replaces a part on your boat, which breaks commonly. Not as common as it used to before they all went to cable. Right. But I like keeping an extra rope one just for that, <clears throat> pulling hooks. It's, it's great. We've used shoelaces. Um, takes a little bit of time braid you can double up 65 70 pound braid but it will break every now and again and you don't want you just want to make it one pull and be done you right. don't want to, it gets a little tender when you pull it two or three times yeah um, so so you that, just feed that through the eye of the hook i tell you what next podcast we're gonna hook tj and i'm gonna do a demonstration on how to pull it out <laughs> y'all gonna see me cry on you cannot live cry. in it 
uh, good for jerking chatterbait hooks out of your hand. Yeah, it is. I mean, okay. that, it's a that's a that's a life tip. Okay. I've experienced that. I've been there. I've had to pull them out of myself. Had to pull them out of other people. I mean, it happens. You're gonna. Everybody should. Everybody who fishes should know how to pull a hook out. I think you can watch it on YouTube. It's it's easy. We'll find a a foam float or something next week, and we'll do. Okay. One. Yeah, we're gonna make our own video yeah. on it. Yeah, we'll we'll do one. It's it's not hard. It comes right out, and honestly, it doesn't hurt if you do it quick. Okay. If you sit there and think about it for a while, it gets tender. The longer it stays in you, the worse it is. Sheesh. So. What does make it somewhat bad is when one's hooked into you, the other one's hooked into a fish. <laughs> what, that, do you do? what do you do? Just you, Well, I tried to pinch the fish's head off. <laughs> I mean, you try to make him stop flopping for sure. <laughs> uh, if I mean, it's me but, or the fish, the fish is going to not make it. <laughs> he ain't going to make it. Oh, man. So The, be, the best one I've ever heard, and I just saw the, the, the um, memory on it, is Brian Morrison. Had a, a big whopper plopper stuck in his hand, and the other one was hooked in his pit bull's nose in the oh. boat. And the pit bull was not happy. Oh my and, gosh. Yeah, so he he has the probably the best hook getting hooked story I've ever heard. We got to have him on just to so, tell us that story. Yeah. Holy it, smokes. It was, uh, I can imagine that one was probably pretty stressful. I don't know how it handled that. Um, in but, all seriousness, though, uh, I was watching a Dustin Connell Fishes in MLF mm-hmm. uh, video. And he said he got a hook in his hand and figured, I'll just deal with it later. I'm going to keep fishing. And he lost feeling in that hand for a while. Absolutely. And he says, it, you know, it never comes back fully. So if you do get hooked past the barb, like, it's going to it's gonna suck. But you, you got to get it out as soon as possible. Right. You, you can't wait all day. Obviously, if it was, you know, I'm not too tough to say if it was one of my kids or something. You know, it, it depends oh, yeah. on the placement. And the top of the head is, is fine. Um, you know, legs, arms, stuff like that. Anywhere around the face, yeah. I would, by all means, go to a doctor. Oh, you yeah. You know, if it's Absolutely. something that you're going to, me, my face, it ain't going to hurt it so bad. But, you know, something like that, go to the doctor. For sure. Um, Brian Mitchell said, it's called KVD. It. Did he make that move he, famous? He, he's done a video on oh, a couple okay. of them. I mean, they've all, like I say, if it happens, you, you're going to get hooked. Yeah. Eventually, you're going to get hooked. So if, I, if we're ever out fishing and this happens, everybody just take a breather because I need to video it. For a, I need to make a video or a TikTok out of yeah. it. Um, but Butch said, I'm about to have my back straight finally. Looking forward to spending some money soon. Good deals. What's up, Matt? Mr. Butch, we're glad to have you. I'm glad to hear you back. Butch Get comes back. in. And I, I ask about it. How you, man, sorry your back's hurting and all that stuff. But he says, what's up, Matt? He didn't even say what's up to you today. Damn. Yeah. All right, Butch. Uh, been there, done that with the hook, both taking out and getting it taken out. Oh, yeah. I it's... think I just need to see it one time. And then uh, I need to see it done one time before I let somebody do it. Well, we can hook you. I mean, I'm glad to yeah. be alive. Just yeah, we're not hooking stick me. Stick it right in. Um, but yeah, that's a, that can be the tip of the week right there. There you go. So everybody get you a piece of rope, trolling motor cord, something like that. So. All right. Um, I'm going to go to hunting. Hunting. Or at least some stuff. Yeah, let's talk so about it. It's a big hunting. thing. Tack the cam. Reveal and Reveal XB. New this week. They just did a national advertised price of one now they're one nineteen ninety nine. So it doesn't matter either one. They just they dropped the price nationally. So all the ones we had, if if you want some, they have it I do think they have another model coming out in about three or four months. So they're pushing them. We probably have fifty or sixty of them here, so they're all one nineteen, so it's a great time to buy. Um, you know, without a doubt that's probably the best sell camera out there. Yeah. Um, realistically the most affordable um, they work underwater in the water in yeah. the swamp they just seem to always work so good good product definitely capitalize on that they're uh the way the the way they're able to like hide the flash too like it's all like there's well, the no visible flash. No glow yeah for sure um and i know people that use these as like security cameras if you have a long driveway you can set these up on a tree yep. people don't see them they stay out of the way I even saw a YouTube video recently where a guy had these set up on his property. A guy broke onto his his uh, land, stole a couple four wheelers, and he took the cart out, took it to the police, and was able to recover all of his stuff because he was using Tacticam to watch everything. So uh, we do sell the Tacticams. We also sell the Tacticams uh, for like to record your hunting experience. Uh, that can mount on your shoulder or on the ground or even on your rifle. Yeah, shoot even through to, scope. Even yeah. to your scope. 
Yep. Uh, so if you want to record your hunts, like not everyone wants to record that stuff for content creation, but maybe you want to record it so that you can show your kids. Or if you have that, oh my goodness moment, no one's going to believe this, you can capture it on camera. Like we have the whole Tacticam outfit here in store. Well, I think it'd be cool to, you know, one of your kids killing their first deer. Oh, yeah. I think that would be awesome to get. And then even for somebody that shoots all the time, you know, we all, we, we aim, we take the shot, and you're like, mm. that muzzle flash goes off, and you're like, man, where did I hit that deer? Well, it'd be pretty cool to be able to back it up and say, well, yeah. I missed it clean. You know, I yeah. can see the bullet hit over here, or, you know, it looks like it hit it back a little bit and give it a little bit of time. So it, it I can see where that would be pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if we said this last week or not, but when we were talking about, Butch said, hey, Kate, what's up, TJ? Haven't met you, but we'll soon. Oh, you must, I must have been thinking about somebody else. Yeah. Oh, Butch Estes. oh, sorry, Butch. I was thinking about the other guy that came in with his uh, back hurting. Oh, that's Chuck. Oh, Butch Chuck. Chuck. Sorry, Butch. I was confusing you for Chuck. But um, we uh, I, we might have said this last week, but you know, I I, I have a GoPro. I, I video every time I'm out fishing because I have the YouTube channel or whatever. Um, but another thing that somebody brought up is you know fishing and hunting is like any other sport. You can watch it back. And see, you know, what sure. you did differently. I mean, whether you're listening to the calls that you were making and how that affected the the bird or the deer that you were calling in. So, um, being able to record what you're doing out there, like in the moment, has so many more benefits than just the social media presence. So, um, I could agree with that. But we can get you out, out outfitted with any any kind of tactic cam setup from the trail cams uh, to the action cameras that they have that are very nice, very lightweight. For sure. For sure. Yeah, all in all, I'm just... You got anything else you want to go over or you want to... Uh, prediction on who is winning the Working Man Tournament Championship this year. Who has the hot hand going into it? Um, You can say... I'll say my prediction. I'm going to... For points for the year or the actual championship? While Derek responds, uh, Chris says, Matt, you're not supposed to miss... Miss what? The deer. Oh, I miss a lot. <laughs> tell them about the. Did you tell them the the snake story last week? No. Tell, we're tell not, them we're the not snake talking story. about that. I shot. I shot at something and missed a lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm. You're pretty safe around me with a handgun. We'll uh, save it that. D- Derek said the championship. I had to think I'm on that one for a second. You go ahead and talk that. Um, I don't, I only know a few people that fish it consistently. Um, and so that you're putting me in a, in a rough spot because I'd have to choose between Chad and Todd. Cause it, I think they're the only two that I know that fish either, it consistently. It, either would be good. Yeah. Usually on the championship though, is somebody, is somebody different. I think, I mean, if I had to pick two right now, just off pass, it would either be, I would go with a Ryan Bowles team or a Tom Bancroft team. And they seem to always when it whenever it's like that, they're tough. Lillian says sorry she's missing out on work this week. It's been it, it's been like uh, there's been a whole. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. Yeah, it, that baby needs to get better and come on back. She brings a certain kind of energy to the office sure. that's just been missing. Everybody asks like, I got here this morning, I was really tired, and everybody's like, TJ, what's wrong? I was like, there's just something missing in the office. Well, that's why I've been grumpy and all that's, day. That's it. So she hasn't yeah. been here. She's sick for a week. <laughs> Derek, next, next week we'll be back. Home. Derek, we'll have her on. Yeah, <laughs> her, she's way more fun than us. I know. Uh, Derek says uh, good selections. Derek, do you fish the Working Man tournaments, and are you fishing the championship? Because I'm willing to put money down on you uh, if you are. Derek, last name I can't see the computer. Uh, so Nixon. Oh, well, he's a, he's a good one. Okay, he's a good one. Should we have picked him? Uh, yeah. Anybody could win. Could but we? I'm just going on. No. Could we win? Mm-mm. We can't even fish it. You got to fish all. The, got to fish all of them. Dang it. Or, or a lot of them anyway. Um, but yeah, if I was going, I'd say Ryan Bowles would be a tough one. I think he's. I don't know. He's got quite a few of them. Points championships and that, and Bancroft's got a couple of them. Don't tell my wife, but we won. I think one year Bancroft won. I think we won about five thousand dollars in the Calcutta. We didn't catch a fish that night, but the uh, we we got right, so that yeah. was good. So. Sheesh. Derek said he's not fishing because someone has to work them. Poor Derek. Sorry, Derek. 
we have to work too. That's why we can. That, honestly, guys, uh, Matt and I have have uh, debated coming out and, and, and smoking don't, everybody. But don't you say that. We won't catch the fish. <laughs> we have not debated smoking. We've been debated like not getting smoked. So yeah. And obviously, we hadn't fished, so you know the outcome. That's right. Uh, so that's everything that we've kind of got on the loosely based agenda. We've been going for about 45 minutes. So, you know, we have about five to 10 minutes, you know, if you guys have any questions or if there's anything else that you guys want to talk about, um, obviously, uh, we can talk about local tournaments or fishing, hunting, loving well, every day. On the next one, we're going to have a, we're going to have a guest on here that's going to, and it, it will, we'll do our normal little bit of fishing, but we're going to talk some more hunting next week or, or the week after next. So okay. we'll talk a little more about game management and how to grow big bucks and predator control. Oh, and cool. A little bit of all that stuff. So I'm not naming who's going to be here, but um, it, ought, it ought to be a good show. And actually, the same one you may want to talk to about fishing too. So. Okay, cool. Um, uh, TJ, did you get the short sleeve performance shirts in yet? <clears throat> uh, we haven't. Uh, gone the short sleeve route yet but that's on the list that'll be happening in the next month or so uh, we got our summer LS ones that are gonna be dropping into pr I'm super excited about these colors uh, in the next couple weeks um, once we get through those uh, we'll look for some short sleeve performance shirts for sure what colors do you like um, because I don't know if we want to do like just redo the old ones that we have or if we want to do something kind of new and new and exciting but uh, let me know what colors like you like, and we'll throw that into the mix. <clears throat> but short sleeve performance shirts are coming. I know those are really popular. Uh, shoot all the coyotes. You shoot coyotes? I just, you know, I've I've killed one deer, y'all. Y'all gotta y'all gotta get me into the hunting. I just do the fishing. Y'all yeah. gotta get me in on it. You gotta look at what what the coyotes take away from the area, and then that will kind of justify. Yeah. Same as the hogs. I mean, they're, you know, you just kind of got to look at what what they do, the damage that they do. Blue, red, gray, white. Classics. Classic colors. But we're kind of, you know, in, in the in the tackle tackle world, you know, we're not just tackling anymore. We're, we're hunting. Um, so this is a lot of our first year. Thank goodness we have uh, Joey and Buddy and... Um, Tony and Trevor and the whole the whole team from anglers over here helping us because we don't we didn't really know what to get you know when it comes to deer stands and deer corn and all that we're we're kind of figuring it out uh, picking the right guns so we're very thankful for those guys they play a big part they they're not here on the podcast that so doesn't mean that you know they're not a huge part of the team and maybe they will come and be on the podcast one day um, but we are. And we're pretty stocked. Yeah. yeah, we got we got deer stands everywhere. We got we got some corn in sold out. We have some shelled corn now. I believe we have some cob corn coming towards the end of the week. They're bagging they're bagging what's left right now. Um, towards the end of the week, we have bukus of guns, uh, a lot of ammo. We just got a, another shipment of camo clothes coming in today. You know, for the for the first part of the season, you know, your your cooler thin shirts and all that and then we you know dove season's right around the corner and then it, it just you know so we're we're stocking up trying to get everything ready and as we always say if you talk to me in here or anybody i mean if you see something that we are lacking that you really like tell us i mean we're you know i think everybody will say if you've asked for it i mean we, we'll try to get it um if it, whether it's special order or if it's something we're going to stock in the store so if it's something that you want that you don't see, ask for it. We'll we'll try our hardest to get it. It's been like every day someone comes in and says, you know, it's my first time here. I didn't know you guys had so much stuff. Or even people that haven't sure. come in a while uh, since we've opened up the whole back room and they're, they're just blown away by everything that we have. Um, like Chris McDonald's asking if we have buckshot. Yeah, Chris. Dilly me Um So but not not your specific ones, Chris. <clears throat> So we're continuing, like we're continuing to get more and more stuff. I love, I love that people come in and say, "Hey, this is a lure," or you know, "This is a, an accessory that I want." And Matt's, Matt's immediately like, "Well, let me look real quick and see how soon I can get it for you." And so uh, Brian Mitchell's asked if we would be getting any kayak gear, and that's something we're definitely, yeah. you know, 
just with the phantom line we want to expand you know mm-hmm. um you know maybe one day a lot of people ask for archery and you know that may be, yeah. that may be in the future same as the kayak i know there's a hole around here you know on the kayak and the kayak supplies so yes we are yeah. we are open to it i believe i asked before y'all shoot your brands out i mean if it's something y'all want to see us carry tell us who the best is you know yeah. i know there's native i looked in the native um hobie there's quite a few different ones tell us what's the best i mean we don't want to stock a bunch tell us what the juice is and make sure we're stocking what everybody wants yeah but yeah i mean we're not we're not against <clears throat> anything um, you know if it's if it's something that we think will work i mean we'll we'll definitely do it and the accessories i know the kayak fishing's a big thing you know because i mean they're not they're not cheap anymore either no yeah, i mean i sold drop 10 grand in a kayak like crazy <laughs> easy like yeah. so uh i know brian through the kayak scene i sold my kayak i got, I was in the kayak fishing i sold it to get my john boat um and i was able to sell sell it for what i got had in it because i mean they're just like everything else right now right. um but yeah so you guys like i'm not as in it anymore uh i kind of miss it but yeah y'all y'all get with me get with matt let us know uh, what you want to see us carry. Um, I have a couple brands that I would like to see us carry that might get me back into kayaking. Um, but um, at the same time, Brian, uh, I might need to borrow a kayak in a couple weeks, but we'll talk, we'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, Garrett says he needs 270 ammo. We got it. We got it. We got it. We cool. got, um, I know we have Norma, which is comparable to Remington and Corlock, and we also have... Uh, can't remember the exact name of it. It's not. It's Barnes or either Hornady. One or the other. One of the high end bullets. Um, polymer tip. We have. We have that. So. Yeah. Stay on the lookout too. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be dropping some videos about some of the gun deals that we have because we have. We've gotten in a lot lately. Um, I know we we restocked a few uh, of the Glock 43Xs, which is one of the most popular uh, carry firearms um, in the world. Uh, we've got, you know. Any, almost any kind of shield you can imagine. Um, we also have shotguns, ARs. Sure. It, we we have it all. And um, and then I mean some things to keep in mind. You know, come in come in and see us. Trevor is he's phenomenal at watching him mount scopes. I mean we have we didn't spare anything when it comes to the torque wrenches to the to the ring lineup tools everything. I mean we we bought everything to yeah. have him. I mean, if you you buy a scope from here, we'll mount it for you. If you buy a package from here, you know we'll mount it and bore sight it, do whatever you want. Um, even if you you know if you bought a scope and you have a rifle and you want it mounted, I mean we can handle that. So come come and see us, and it's it's pretty cool to watch. Uh, I'm learning every. I, I never really specifically knew how to clean a pistol. Yeah. Um, I asked Trevor to show me, and I mean he showed me how I can break it down pretty fast, clean it. It's very simple. Um, lot, lots of stuff like that so I mean it's not just you know the hunting and fishing if you need some know-how um, we have two or three hundred yards behind us where we we got um, you know vices that you can set your guns up not necessarily shoot but you, if you want to compare all the scopes and all that looking through them and you know looking in the sun what, looking early in the morning you can you can actually do all that here before you buy them you're not just inside like a a big a big box store where you know you can't walk outside with the scope here i mean we'll take you outside you can we'll show you how it looks in the bright sun how it looks in the dark i mean that's some stuff that we're just trying to do a little better than everybody else so capitalize on all that stuff yeah i mean we when scopes we have scopes in there from your 22 rifle scopes that you know are 79 dollars on up to um swarovski scopes I think our most expensive one's like thirty seven hundred dollars. So yeah. and everywhere in between, Barry X threes, loophole riflemen's, um, Barry X Freedoms, we have Sig Sauer scopes. Um, I think the uh Miopta is on the way. I know that's one that everybody wanted to carry and Trigicon. We have mm-hmm. Trigicon coming. So um we have a, a big big variety of stuff and I mean same with the rifles. I mean we got from five hundred dollar you know, rifle scope combinations to, uh, you know, Remington 700 rifles on up to your Weatherby Vanguards and Benelli Lupa, or what is that, Benelli Lupa? Lupa. Um, so, and everything in between. I think we have about every, you know, major brands. So, yeah. 
I mean, we're, we're Bergera. That's work. been a good one. That's why I bought a Bergera. I like them a lot. So that's a fun word to say. Bergera, Bergara, Bergara, whatever. I'm sure I sp- said it wrong. Dude, that but. and that's that's the cool thing about Phantom is like you guys that have been following us from the beginning. Uh, I say us, you know, I, I'm I'm on the team now, but You're on the it's team. us, you know, like from the uh, how far we've come, but how far we're going. Like uh, this, this is just the tip of the iceberg for where we want to be. Um, so thank you guys uh, again for all the support because. Um, we're here for you guys. We want to we want to help get as many people into the sports that we love as possible. And uh, Steve says the shirts are comfortable. I have the cotton and the performance ones. And and even even on that note, uh, Steve, we're that's enough. We, we we know we've got a great thing, uh, but but we want to we want to be able to provide the absolute very best across the board, whether it's apparel or or the shopping experience, uh, along with prices, anything that we can. Like we want to be the best. Sure. And so. Um, we're here for you guys. Um, anything you need. Um, with that, it's six fifty-five. I don't really have any more questions. Anything you closing comments? Mm-mm. No, we just we appreciate everybody and <laughs> yeah, can love to continue to support. We absolutely love y'all coming in the store and talking with us. And oh yeah, uh, I look forward to it every day. So please continue. And like I say, if it's something you need, we'll get it. Absolutely. And uh, to sign off here, I'd say once again, if you guys. Want to go follow us on all our socials uh, here on Facebook, over on YouTube. Remember, we're going to do some special stuff with YouTube uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but we're also on TikTok, still figuring out the TikTok game. Um, and I'm on TikTok, you know. Matt's on TikTok. I have a TikTok account just so I could watch the Phantom stuff. Hey, when we get to... It's very addictive. When we get to 1,000 TikTok followers, Matt will do a dance. Tell them, so for... People like me, we'll say, yeah. for the over forty crowd. Okay. You you started putting bloopers up. Yeah. Okay. Tell them how to get to the bloopers because they're kind of hard to find. Okay. I had to get one of my kids to find the bloopers for me because it's not really on the post. Okay. So tell them where they're at because I think there's some bloopers of me. It, so there are. So those are on a story. So the ones from before. Are... Or somewhere. Actually, I think they're on my phone. Did you so do I, a stale cracker video this morning? I, I'm going to post that one tomorrow. I did a stale cracker <laughs> blooper video this morning at all to make everybody's day. Because I want to do more with that. So if, if you are in the crowd that's not social media savvy and you want to see a little bit of bonus or extra content, uh, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, if you're on our profile, uh, click our profile, uh, the little circle picture, um, and it'll show you what's our story. Those are active for 24 hours. Um, I need to post them in a more permanent thing because Matt is hilarious in the bloopers. Um, and tomorrow I'll post this, the stale cracker video that he made. Um, but uh, yeah, just click our click our logo, uh, click our little icon, and you'll see. Yeah. Um, also, uh, for for everyone else that's posting, tagging us and stuff, the easiest thing for us to do is to add you, or if, if you post yourself wearing Phantom gear, um, tag us so that we can repost you into our story. Uh, so that other people can can see that as well. We we love when you guys are, are tagging us and sure. showing us the fish you catch, especially when we see kids. Um, Absolutely, that's what we're really passionate about. So, um, I think that's gonna do it for the podcast tonight. Remember, we'll be live again two weeks in two weeks with a special guest that I don't even know who it is. It's so secret. I'm so. not gonna tell you. You can't keep a secret. Don't tell me. You don't can't keep me. a secret. <laughs> you get too excited. But uh, I'm. Gonna- <laughs> You do. You That's, all spun up. Hey, y'all. y'all I lost, lost my phone. Y'all hired me to be the hype guy. But yeah. hey, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to hit you guys with the end screen, uh, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.